As the Chairman and Vice Chairman are unable to attend today, can I take nominations for a Chairman, please? No. <laughs> I'm nominating Councillor John. Is there a seconder to that? Um, and uh, Councillor Redrup, you're the only other person here who hasn't been nominated. Are you happy with that nomination? <laughs> Councillor Darman, you are chairman for today. Uh, we do have three written submissions which are here, which I'll go through. Uh, the first one is from Rachel Bridgeland, and I'll read it out. It's quite short. Uh, it seems the foreshore and banks of the river of the Medina Way, uh, from the Medina Way flyover to the cinema, are being counted as the harbour, which means that nearly two kilometres of crumbling walls are the responsibility of the harbour to keep in good repair. In case of partial collapse and consequential closure of Coppins Bridge roundabout, the harbour account will be held responsible. As the flyover prohibits any harbour activity south of the flyover, and therefore no income is generated, why has the harbour committee allowed this and included the foreshore and banks of the river in the harbour order? And the response is, uh, the southern extent of the harbour is shown on the attached plan, which will be circulated on the, the email, which formed part of the 1988 harbour revision order, and as stated, this extends south and east of the Medina Way, ending in the vicinity of Cineworld. This reflects the Council's ownership of the riverbed and walls, land and predates both the Harbour Committee and the Newport Isle of Wight Harbour Revision Order of 2021. Indeed, the southern extent of the harbour is referenced in the Pier and Harbour Order, Newport Isle of Wight Confirmation Act 1954. The second one is from uh, Mr Guy Eads uh, with a request to read it out, which I will do. The question is, the Newport Harbour Estate generates an annual income from charges levied on persons choosing to park their motor vehicles on harbour land. Please can you confirm whether this income is attributed annually to the meeting the Harbour Estate operating and maintenance costs? Can you confirm what the income has been for the financial years 2019 to 20 and 2020 to 21? After overhead costs for servicing the collection of this income, Please can the Harbour Commissioners identify what activity this income has been used to address Harbour Estate operating and maintenance costs? And the response is, 
The Council is the statutory harbour authority for Newport Harbour. Accordingly, harbour legislation requires the Council to prepare an annual statement of accounts relating to the harbour activities and any associated activities for each harbour for which it is the statutory harbour authority. The income received for the two car parks situated within the harbour, Harbour North and Harbour South, forms part of the harbour's annual statement of accounts. The income for the last two financial years was as follows. 2019 to 20, £1,811.22 pence. And for 2020-21, £353 and 8 pence. No overhead costs are apportioned to the harbour for the collection of this income. The income does not directly address any specific operating or maintenance costs, but form part of the overall account. That's the second one. And the third one uh, from Mr Christopher Dodd, which is also fairly short and I'll read it, is I refer to a copy of part attached of the plan in the 1912 deed of transfer of the Medina estuary, its creeks and inlets compromising, uh, comprising Newport Harbour from the Crown to the then Isle of Wight Authority. Can this committee please let me know when was the paddle steamer moored in the inlet of the harbour shown on that plan, close to the southern boundary of the island harbour? What is the annual mooring charge for this large vessel? And when was the last payment made? And where is that shown in the harbour accounts? As the steamer is now severely decayed, can you state when the last water pollution test was carried out in its vicinity? And was that test satisfactory? And why was this arm of the harbour not included in either the 1988 or the 2022 HROs? And the response is, the Council's legal team are currently reviewing the original deed of transfer and title deeds. Once ownership of the area in question is confirmed, a formal written response will be issued. Thank you. <clears throat> right, that deals with uh, number three. There's no one in the gallery, so we'll go on to number four. Uh, item four, to consider and approve the annual accounts for Newport Harbour and Ventnor Harbour. Does anybody wish to say anything to this item? Let's hand it over, shall we? Um, thanks, Councillor John. Um, <clears throat> this is a, an item that we have each year, as was mentioned earlier in one of those, um, those correspondences. We have a duty to um, undertake um, a, a statement of annual accounts for the year um, for our two statutory harbours, currently Newport and Ventnor. Uh, we do this each year um, and this committee uh, is presented to this committee and then subject to this committee approving those, then they are sent off to the DFT for verification. Um, they are prepared by the accounts team and they are audited independently. And then my colleague Sean does the activity report that you'll find in the appendices one and two that supports the figures. We can take you through it if you so wish. Um, it's obviously for a period of quite some time ago now. It's obviously last year's financial accounts, and I'm more than happy to take you through them, but you'll probably be more interested in the next item uh, on the agenda, which is the current accounts to date. Um, but more than happy to go through any queries or concerns anybody has. I will raise one slight concern, which always causes a little bit of an issue, is these accounts have to be presented um, in accordance with the Companies Act of 2006. So the presentation of these accounts is quite different than the way the council presents its normal accounts. So it does take into consideration things such as depreciation, uh, which there are always a little bit of questioning on. Um, but that's the format that the DFT require them in. So that's the format we present them in. Um, it's much the same story as previous years. Um, but if anybody's got any questions, I'm more than happy to um, answer them, or one of my colleagues might be able to answer them. Thank you. Thank you, um, Alex. Uh, I'm more than happy to um, uh, to carry on with this year's accounts, as opposed to reviewing the old ones. Uh, but I've got no no questions in particular. Else, 
So that was carried unanimously. Thank you very much indeed for that. <clears throat> we'll now move on to item five on the agenda, uh, the current accounts, uh, starting with 21-22 for Newport and then the 21-22 for Ventnor. Alex. Thanks, Councillor John. I'll just um, get them up on the screen. Um, as I say, these are the most recent set of accounts provided to us by our finance team. Um, they are the up-to-date position and the forecasted end-of-year position um, up to, well, it, the, the accounts up to the 28th of the second this year. Um, I just can't be still open it. I mean, I think in general, if we look at Newport first, which is the first item, um, there is a slight increase in expenditure. Um, there have been a couple of revisions to that. Um, Sean's been looking into those for me. There's a couple of queries that we've had that aren't shown in the reports that are attached where the expenditure is actually slightly better than expected. There were a couple of wrong codings, which we can detail for you if you so wish. I think they amount to about £3,000. Sean, is that correct? Yeah, so it's £3,000 slightly better than you've currently got on the recent set of figures. Um, and we're seeing um, a generally a general increase in the income for Newport Harbour overall. Um, predominantly, as has been the pattern um, since the beginning of the year, really, um, with regards to the leases income, uh, we've seen some substantial increase above budget on the leases income, which is, I think, something that's very, uh, very good for the harbour. We are still seeing um, reductions in the level of um, mooring fees at the folly. Um, particularly, um, and I think a lot of that is still the recovery from COVID. Um, we're still getting a reasonable amount, um, but we're not quite hitting budget at the moment. But overall, the current position at Newport Harbour is about 25,000 forecasted in the good as opposed to the budget. So I think it's a fairly encouraging position to be in, particularly considering the damage that COVID has done to income right across the council to be in a, a, for, a, a good forecasting position at the end of the year is, I think, very pleasing, to be honest. But I'm more than happy to take any questions on the Ventnor, um, on the Newport paper. So any, any questions on the Newport paper or indeed would um, any of the other officers who are here want to add anything to it? No? All right, we'll move straight on then to the, uh, the Ventnor one. Um, the Ventnor one, and I do apologise for sounding like a stuck record, you'll have heard this on previous occasions, is a much simpler account. Um, and it's much the same pattern as we've had up till date. Um, as far as expenditure is concerned, most items are very similar and are on budget, with the exception of contracted services, um, which is the age-old concern about the cost of removing seaweed from the harbour. Uh, we are considering to see um, escalated costs with that. And I think we will possibly continue to do so until we're able to resolve that problem. And that gives us a, mm -hmm. an, an overspend of, of, on budget of around £18,000 as detailed on the report. The only two sources of income that come in to um, Ventnor Harbour are from the lease from the, um, from the fisheries that are down there, um, which is coming in each year, as it says there. Um, under leases, um, so that's that's on target. Um, but we have seen a reduction in birthing fees from the few the few other births that we have down there, to give us a slightly lower forecasted position on income, uh, which then gives us a net position of a twenty three thousand pound overspend on the budget forecasted for the end of the year. Um, I'm not surprised by the birthing fees with regards to COVID. I am concerned as we move forward, as I think many members are, with how we resolve the issue with the seaweed. Um, and, but that's for further discussion, uh, possibly at another meeting. Thank you, Captain John. Thank you. Are there any questions on Vendor? Two. Councillor Prime. Councillor Peace first. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Alex, I wasn't able to be at the last meeting, so I wasn't quite sure um, what the score was with the the contract with Cheetah Marine for removing seaweed and that kind of stuff. I know at the previous meeting I'd asked that it, whether it was going to go to a uh, an open tender. Um, 
and it was where, where are we at now with with the whole tender process and so on and so forth because i am aware of other parties that would like to tender if it was an open one i'll provide you with a, with a basic update sure might want to provide you with a little bit more detail uh, we are aware that there are some interested parties that want to tender for, for, for the business and tender for possibly the operation of the harbour even. Um, but that interest is not quite ready to be put in place yet. Um, so we are going to have to look to temporarily extend the existing contract. You're working on that at the minute, Sean, aren't you? Do you want to expand on that at all? Thanks, Alex. No, you're, you're quite correct. Um, the council has received um, an expression of interest uh, for the management of the harbour um, with the potential to dispose of a freehold to that party um, and we've briefed um, Councillor Jordan on that interest and we are looking at a potentially um, a competitive process to actually outsource the management of the harbour which would include the seaweed removal um, and as Alex said that's a report we'll bring back to the next committee um, we'll actually have some meat on the bones of that um, because of that interest um, talking to procurement and looking at a potential time scale, um, we are looking at a one year extension to the existing contract to get us in a position where we may be in a position to divest ourselves of the management responsibility and cost for the harbour. So it's very much an interim and a holding position. Just to add to that and to, to remind people of our kind of commitment to the harbour, it is a statutory port. So be able to, for us to be able to dispose of the freehold or even a long lease, we would have to close it as a statutory port, which is a considerable amount of work for the legal team to do. However, we are able to facilitate the, the transfer of a management agreement over to somebody else. Ideally, we may want to be trim tracking both, um, but the, certainly the former, um, my understanding is that could take quite a few years, unfortunately. Okay, can, can we just in that process make sure that uh, Councillor Peace's uh, interested party is on the list of parties that you've got? Um, yeah, just in a, I think from what Sean's just said, the party that I've been approached by is, is a completely separate party to that person who's, who's approached you because this was purely about removing seaweed, not about the management. So that's potentially we've got two bidders who could come in in addition to Cheetah Marine. So, but I can, uh, I can make those introductions. Afterwards. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Redrock. Uh, no, All right. Well, if there are no other questions, I don't think we have to do anything with these. They're simply financial reports as an update. So, well, thank you very much for those. <clears throat> and uh, move on to item six, which is the report of the senior harbour master. Jonathan. Thank you very much. Um, yes, sorry, it's only sort of two and a half months um, report. I've sort of overtaken myself slightly. Um, so in the last three uh, three months, sort of the major thing is that we finally got um, the, a relief harbour master hired, and we've gone through the process of hiring two um, duty harbour masters. So um, from the first, uh, we've actually got couple of extra staff so we can now start manning it either side of high, high water including the weekends so going forward it's sort of going to make it a lot easier and the office is going to be manned more more, more often um, we've sent out the renewal letters for all of the folly um, uh, birth, birth holders and um, we've actually had a lot of them have replied already so we've actually taken money before it's due which is always good to hear but uh, yeah, it surprised me a little bit um uh the pontoons down at the folly have now prepped for the se season so they've been power washed all of them have been done as well as newport here um the ground chains which the are the bases of the folly swing moorings have been inspected um and we'll need to do a bit of work on them but it's good that we've had them inspected um, and um, we're in a good position because we've got some of the old floating bridge chain that will work very nicely as a uh, replacement. Um, the harbour launch has been resurfaced and uh, inspected, so that's um, 
its license has been renewed for the next year um, and it's also been serviced. Um, and um, the, the refurb to um, the Harbour office has been complete. We've now got heating. Um, so, yeah, so it's all good. Um, and the works to the walls that they've been repairing um, has now been completed. But when I finished writing this, they were still just doing the final bits. Um, basically, at the moment, we've just been sort of preparing for the beginning season, which hopefully will have some more visitors short, shortly now that the summer season and it's getting warmer, because you probably noticed by the visitors' figures. We've not been overly busy at the moment at Newport. I'm happy to take any questions. Can I, can I just jump in with one of my own? Could you, because um, it's always a particular area of concern, give us a little bit more background about the um, uh, the incident that happened with the volunteer? Any safety incident, i just like to pick it out, that's all. I think it's at um, page 41 at the bottom. 2.1, there it is. Yes, um, I only got it sort of third party that um, a rib came up, uh, went beyond the usual point place where we'd like the visitors to moor. Um, I think they just got it wrong and instead of reversing went forwards and they glanced off the wall. Um, no one seemed to be injured. We got no formal um, reports from them um, and the boat uh, turned around and exited at a sensible speed. Um, but uh, I think it was just due to um, confusion in the controls, um, but there wasn't any damage to the wall or any damage to um, that was reported of people. So it was just a glancing blow. Just pilot error. I believe so from what I could tell, but it was a third party report. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions on uh, the Senior Harbour Master's report? Just one. Just, just one. Um, similar thing on 2.6, um, the, the skipper that fell in the water and also the visitor to pontoon. Um, he stated that he had difficulty with the pontoon ladders due to their design. What on earth was that about? Well, I thought ladders sort of went up and down. And did he have three arms or something that mainly fell off? Um, the pontoon ladders that we have are, um, they're retractable, so they're made out of sort of U-shapes that slide down each other. Um, they work very well where, for where it dries, they don't stick in the mud and they can't get bent sideways because they're designed to flex. Um, the only down point with the design of them is that they're only about a foot above um, the pontoon deck. So you can't reach too far ahead, um, above and then leave yourself up on the bottom rung. So um, we're having a look in and seeing if the mud is soft enough for us to be able to put a fixed ladder that will have enough strength to sink into the mud. So then we can get it deep enough that it's usable to get your foot on, but then it's strong enough and, so and high enough on the pontoon that you can actually leave yourself up on it. So it's... Um, it's the slight, it's the fault, it's the weakness in the design that it allows it to Constantina up and down so then it dries out reasonably easily, but it does make it a bit more difficult to use, um, especially during the winter where people are um, slightly heavier with clothing and waterproofs that increase their weight so it makes it harder to get out of. So what we're looking into this thing is if we can get fixed lap ladders and now we're dredged we should have a bit more depth. So as long as we can make the bottom rung deep enough that you can actually get your leg on it, um, we'll swap them over. That's a red rope. Um, yes, I mean, um, we bought them and they are designed for that purpose. Uh, one of them on the inside had been slightly damaged, but we've now swapped that out. Um, but they are quite lightweight. Um, so this is why we're looking at swapping it for a walk-on. 
up and running. Yeah. yeah. Um, and where it's been dredged, we think we can get the bottom rung low enough. Um, so the worst one is putting. Uh, yeah. So when somebody's uh, alongside the pontoon, they can actually get their their foot up to the bottom rung. Um, but we can't go too far below the pontoons because at low tide, where they dry out, um, pontoon floats are about half a metre down. And you've got to be reasonably flexible to get your foot only half a metre, sort of, yeah. Um, if, if your shoulder's at water um, at um, sort of the height of the water, it makes it quite flexible to be able to get. Uh, at the moment, it sort of dries. It dries near enough. Yeah. Um, uh, we've got about nine foot. Nine. Yeah. Um, but the pontoon height is about half a meter above. Um, so the floats draw about that much. So that's the difference we have. So hopefully it's soft enough where it is that we can get a strong enough ladder that will push in um, by a couple of feet. So then when it's afloat, it's usable still, but at low tide, it doesn't snap it off. So it's just sort of, yeah. Was the damage to the roof of the boat museum just storm damage or? Uh, yes, sadly, it was just the, uh, the roof got peeled off it. Um, but we did shut the car park as a precaution um, for um, a majority of that week because we did have, I think it was three named storms in a week. So once it started to peel off, we shut both barriers to make sure that no cars were damaged. Um, and scaffolding's gone up and they're up there now fixing it. Good. So uh, any other questions on this one? No. We'll thank the senior harbour master for his report. Um, and go on to item seven on the agenda, which is the, we we'll do them in, in the same order, get well planned for Newport Harbour and then the get well planned for Ventnor Harbour. Thank you, Chair. Um, you'll have had an opportunity to review the get well plan for Newport Harbour. Um, as we see, there are a number of items which have now been completed. Uh, most notably, we've undertaken the consultation on the draft of general directions, uh, which were signed off at this committee previously. Um, by the end of the consultation period, we had two responses. Uh, one was totally supportive of the general directions as drafted. Uh, one was a comment about a particular paragraph. Uh, we've consulted with our marine lawyers and our designated person, David Foster, who we recall attended a previous meeting. And we sent a response back to the individual um, explaining why they're drafted the way they are. And we're just waiting for a response to see whether they're happy with that. Um, if they are, we can then move to implementing those. If not, um, we'll enter a dialogue to potentially amend the wording of those to satisfy um, both the harbour's interests and the individual's interests in terms of um, navigation marks. Also, most notably, uh, as Jonathan has already said, we have completed the staffing restructure within the harbour. We have two duty harbour masters who work on average uh, 50 hours a week across the year. That will give um, additional capacity in particular to Jonathan to be able to undertake uh, the work which David Foster reported on at the last meeting resulting from his most recent audit. And I'm pleased to say David Foster and Marico have been retained as designated person for both Newport Harbour and Ventnor Harbour. Um, their contract had expired and we needed to go through a competitive procurement exercise and they were successful so we have retained their services through that process and we've had a dialogue with David and we will be arranging for David to come down to both Newport and Ventnor Harbour late May early June once Jonathan's had an opportunity to dedicate some time um, to getting the paperwork back up to the, the standard it needed to be um, maintain that um, Welcome. Any questions on the Newport Get Well Plan? Councillor Price. First of all, apologies for being late, um, Chairman. I'm really sorry about that. I know you're a busy chap. I did try. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not a question, really. It's just to say, um, you know, when, when we look back at um, 
you know, I've been on this committee since it started, actually. And um, when we look back at where we started from um, and, and when David Foster first sort of presented what we needed to do, it looked like it could just go on forever, couldn't it? didn't it, really? You know, it was, a, it was a huge mountain to climb. So, you know, I just think it's, it's good to acknowledge all the work that's gone into it and all, this, all the hard work from the staff to get to this point where we're, you know, we're edging towards complete... Um, conformity basically aren't we so um i think it's uh, fantastic long-winded but we knew it was going to be definitely that and um you know it, we're actually very close aren't we so a question my own um we had some dates in there which were due to complete training by the uh, in in april etc and i wondered with the new people coming on board whether we're still able to meet those dates or perhaps they're joining us fully trained and need little additional training as it is. We um, engage with, now David's company has been retained as designated person. Um, we have a training date, um, which I think is the 8th of April. Um, David is coming down and he's undertaking designated person training, um, Port Marine Safety Co training with the two new staff and also the relief staff and doing some general refresher training as well. So that is all in hand. Good. All right, uh, should we move on to Vendor? Do you want to deal with that separately? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, in terms of Vendor, um, unfortunately, not, not quite so many completed items, um, a small number of uh, lesser items. Um, I think that reflects the general comment that David made at the, at the last meeting um, from his audit. Um, at the time, there was only, only Jonathan undertaking the work in terms of maintaining the, the systems and drafting those for Ventnor. Um, the approach we've agreed to take with David is we will get the, um, the documentation in terms of a safety management system up together for Newport um, and then it's a relatively straightforward process to modify that for Ventnor. Obviously it's a smaller scale operation um, and we can scale down that documentation. So the approach is we will get Newport up to standard and then very quickly after that we'll modify that documentation and implement that at Ventnor. So hopefully by the time we have the next committee meeting, uh, we should be in a position to say we, we're at least partially, if not wholly through, um, the get well plan for Ventnor. I think that's excellent news. Um, right, uh, any questions on item seven from anybody? No? Right, well, thank you very much for the plans. Um, and moving on to item eight on the agenda, members question time. I'm sure you're eager and chomping at the bit. Councillor Price. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, it's just, um, it, it's probably not for this committee as such, but it might, might get the pointer uh, or be signposted to the right person. Um, obviously, um, following the election in May last year, uh, my ward expanded fully into Whippingham. So uh, the folly is now part of ward that I represent, whereas it wasn't before. So um, I'm learning all about the um, issues of uh, Folly Lane and uh, and some of these things that um, I think the previous councillor is probably only too pleased to have uh, <laughs> lost. Um, but um, I've, I've been engaging with a number of the stakeholders that are responsible for Folly Lane, which is, many people know, it's an unadopted road um, that's, that's loosely owned by um, some residents. Um, and obviously it's in a terrible state of disrepair. Um, and I, I just wondered, has there been any, because I don't know, has there been any previous contributions from the Harbour or the Albright Council towards upkeep of the road? Um, given that the road is the only land access by vehicle to um, the, the folly, um, is it something that the Ardwight Council or the Harbour Authority would be willing to engage with me on um, so I can sort of create a long term programme for just keeping on top of some of the worst stuff? I appreciate it's not a council responsibility, but I think that the, um, the facility that the council run or the Harbour Authority runs at the Folly, I think it would be um, only fair to ask for some kind of future contribution towards the upkeep of Folly Lane. Just maybe, I might have opened a can of worms there, but I wonder if there's any um, any direction anyone could give me. Thank you. <laughs> You're all staring off into the... Maybe before we answer it, could we 
one thing, because I've often wondered about Folly Lane as well, and you, you, you use the phrase loosely owned by, which is interesting. And I think it would be, I've never seen a definitive answer to that. Um, I used to be the chairman of the Medina Mariners down there um, for 15, 16 years. We did have some repairs go on down there, instigated by the guy that owns the caravan, static caravans down there, and with help from the farm and the landlords of the pub. Um, we did invite, and ourselves, we made a small contribution too. And I also think the harbour did as well to a small degree, if my memory serves me correctly. I'm not 100% sure on that. I can't remember what the outcome was. We are talking quite a number of years ago. Um, but there was a development going on at the same time on the Saro site, uh, wasn't there? And there was a bit of land that was purchased um, to change the access, in, if my memory serves me correctly. When the work was undertaken, it wasn't undertaken fully. It concentrated just around the static caravans as opposed to coming all the way down to the folly. Um, but if I'm right in thinking that you guys still uh, pay for a bin uh, down there, do you not? Was that bin stopped since the, my day? The cost of the, the wheelie bin, which is situated there, is shared between the Isle of Wight Council and Cows Harbour Commission. Yeah, I thought, well, you were doing one each. Yeah, yeah, because I know there was two there. Yeah. But as far as I'm aware, no other work has taken place. So it probably is about time, apart from the tree in the middle of the road got burnt down, didn't it? And then replaced. <laughs> So, I wouldn't want to put I wouldn't want to put you on the spot of answering the question right now, but I do think it's an interesting point to talk about. So maybe um, maybe rather than trying to give half an answer now, could we ask that you put together an answer to that and maybe circulate it as a written response to Councillor Price? I think he's got an addendum to add to this question. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Yeah, it's, well, it's only really to say because um, you know it was a bit of a cheeky question, but I, I don't really know where to start because um. I've engaged with the Residents Association, I've engaged with the, um, the, the owner of Medina Park um, and a couple of other residents and, um, and that's, it, it's led me to a point where I understand that um, they, they have worked together to do bits on the, on the road as time's gone by. Um, and they alluded to the fact that there was a little bit of um, help from the Isle of Wight Council many, many years ago. But I just thought that um, it's, it's a constant topic that, that I'm, I'm being presented with and I just if I knew the right person that I should speak to I can maybe try and bring them into the conversation and see if there's any future mileage in the conversation so all right so we'll leave, we'll leave you to answer that I assume in terms of a, a legal responsibility we have no legal responsibility no, or liability down there at all do we um, I do notice though with the bin down there which we spoke about there's often two bins side by side. Yeah. Uh, the one is, I should imagine, the commercial bin for the restaurant, is it? No. Isn't it? Whose is the other bin? The, what, I, I thought, my understanding when I was chairman, those two bins were put outside our a little bit of land there, was sponsored by the Isle of Wight Council and Cowles Harbour Commission. Um, the bins for the pub um, are inside their compound. Right. Okay. So, the, uh, so they're they're both our part hours, are they? Or is one of the two hours and the other one not? Which is it, 50-50 or one and the other? Um, the two bins that are by the slipway where Folly Ventures run, um, we share the invoice with cows um, monthly. So we just divide it 50-50. So you could say one whip bin was theirs and one bin was ours, but they're done as one contract. It doesn't really matter which bin of the two bins people put things in, for example. That's the difference. All right. Uh, any other questions from the members? All right. Council Pete. Uh, Chair, just, just coming on to what Matt's just said, and I don't want to annoy all your residents, your new residents, but um, I'd be very concerned about scope creep and the Isle Wight Council footing the bill for another road that we don't actually own. Um, as far as I'm concerned, and I and I know the folly, I you know, I use the moorings and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's a private road. Um, let the businesses on that private road fix it. Um, I don't think it's the responsibility of the council, to be honest. It's my clarification on the legal issue. Councillor Price. Um, yeah, that's not what I was going to ask, but, uh, but, <laughs> but 
Um, Councillor Pease, the Isle of Wight Council have a facility down there that is accessed by its users, so it is one of the stakeholders, really, I would say. Um, yeah. Um, the, um, no, what I was going to ask about is um, we previously, I don't know, maybe I've missed it, um, we were going to have a trip up the river, weren't we, at some point? Um, we, yeah. we did one very early on in this committee's um, uh, uh, life, and it was it, it's a real eye-opener to understand that the scope of the Harbour Estate um, and, and I think we should try and get another date in the diary for that if we can at some point. Now all the restrictions are being lifted and hopefully uh, um, we're not going to be... Um, and spring has sprung. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It could be. It's so beautiful as well as the fact of understanding all the responsibilities that the Harbour Authority has. I think we'll all, we'll all endorse that one. We'll leave, leave that one to you. Yeah. We did last time. <laughs> all right. Ray, is that, a, is that a legacy light you've got? Sorry? Is that a legacy light? Yeah. Oh, sorry, yes. Right. Any other questions? No? Good. Uh -huh. <laughs> sorry, guys, I'll get there in the end. Um, one question just aimed at Jonathan, uh, more of a prediction, what's he thinking the take-up's going to be for Newport Harbour um, in visitors? Because um, we are talking about changing the harbour with a bridge and whatnot, um, because it doesn't look uh, promising, is what I was thinking. Um, I think our historic visitors um, will keep coming. Um, it hopefully now that we'll have staff actually on the pontoons and actually be a point of contact during the weekends that we might be able to increase that and also that now we're, we're actually managing the pontoons over the weekend we can encourage rallies um, which is a good way of um, people that haven't been to Newport before don't mind coming with a group from their clubs and then once you've done it once you realize it's not that difficult we don't have crocodiles um, and then hopefully the visiting numbers will increase um, it's not something we've been able to do before because we didn't manage uh, we didn't have the capability of managing the pontoons so with a bit of luck um, we can slowly increase that this year with rally numbers um, and hopefully our numbers will increase um, but it's but there are people around still so hopefully the numbers will pick up and last summer even with the restrictions we still have boats in there so hopefully good all right well with that if there are no further questions we'll close the meeting thank you very much indeed everybody thank you officers for attending